Oh boy. Yeah, a whole lot going on, man. Um, looks like we live. What's going on, everybody? Conscious approach, another week, another video. JV wins, Dogon SS. Pleased to have you with us once again. Uh, it is October 25th. Uh, got a truncated broadcast this week because uh, both of our schedules, respectively, are a bit hectic at the moment. But we're going to make the best of it because we never take weeks off. So uh, fear not, for we will not ever take a week off. Uh, before we get into uh, this week's commentary, wanted to remind everybody, man, if you're watching this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, uh, comment on the video, let us know what you think. Uh, let us know where we went wrong. Let us know where we went right. Uh, we are not cultivating a cult here. Uh, we embrace diversity of thought. So the idea is that you should not agree with everything that we have to say. Um, and you damn sure shouldn't agree with everything I have to say. So uh, definitely support, man. Appreciate you supporting Logical Content. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. So on and so forth. Comment wherever you see this stuff. Share it because we are growing and things are going to get better. Now, with that out of the way, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into this, this week's topics, man. First up, uh, we are going to talk about rapper Westside Boogie and some comments that he made in regards to the hip-hop industry. So uh, this was a TMZ sort of, you know, you know how TMZ works, right? So they pop up on you in a public place to answer answer some to ask you some questions and that's how they do celebrities or even like remotely public figures and whatnot west side boogie is a rapper affiliated with eminem he's big out on the west coast obviously and so um they wanted to ask him his two cents because taylor swift released a new album i believe last week mm -hmm. uh, now i'm no taylor swift fan i don't really follow taylor swift like that um the songs that I know of Taylor Swift are the ones that are really popular, the singles and all that. I don't know too much of the album because I don't follow Taylor Swift like that. But I know enough to know that she is extremely popular. Uh, and apparently, Taylor Swift dropped an album that in the first week, it, it, in terms of, you know, I guess like streams, um, eclipsed the sale. It, it, they eclipsed the sales of Drake, Kendrick Lamar, and Lil Baby combined. Um yeah, so, you know, Drake is as big as it gets in the hip-hop scene. So for you to for you to eclipse Drake single-handedly is one thing, but when you throw Drake with two other popular hip-hop artists and you combine them and you still outpace them, uh, you know, there's, there's something to be said for that. And so I guess that sparked this conversation around whether hip-hop's dominance as a major genre because you know hip-hop is no longer a sub-genre it's a mace it's, it's a major genre and i guess the idea is you know is hip-hop losing its luster is it losing its dominance is pop starting to creep back up into the recesses of our collective consciousness and take over um and so one of these tmz guys uh ran up on west side boogie um and asked him specifically about you know what rappers need to do in light of what's going on or what happened with taylor swift doing so well with some of these hip-hop numbers sort of declining as of late um and so they asked him his opinion and you know this is what he had to say and then of course after that we will give our opinions about this particular topic there's, there's an article, article that's, that's like making, making waves in rap, rap right now because, because uh they're, they're saying, saying that that, that Hip-hop, hip -hop, although, although it is, it is the, the most dominant, dominant form of music, music right, right now, in genre-wise, yeah. that, that there's, there's concern, concern that the magic is gone. Man, you, you know what's crazy? crazy? I was just talking to somebody yesterday when I was listening to a pop song, song and I told my, my manager how white people, people feel like they're paying more attention, attention to the details of songs right now. And I don't think rappers understand, like, the details still matter. And people people notice it. They, like, subconsciously, they probably don't even notice they notice it. But that lazy music, we lose it because of it, so... Rappers, Rapper, get, get it, it together. together. Stop, Stop being late. It's, not, it's also just not about lyrics. It's like it's beat selection. It's telling your story because we in a space where everybody rap good now. So like, yeah, how yeah. you gonna deliver your message? How you gonna make it sound authentic? How you gonna make it sound different? What do you think the answer is? Tell me for one, if you tell your own story, you all, it's automatically gonna be unique because it's your story. As far as sonically, as far as it's just about pushing yourself and pushing different limits. Don't, don't get complacent, because when you get complacent, complacent, that's when you get trash. Are, are the beats, beats like, really, like, I mean, there's some hot beats. There's some really crazy producers out there. There's some hot beats. I think the magic happens when 
the artist do what he's supposed to do on the song and the producer doing what he's supposed to do on the song. And that cohesive moment creates the magic. When it's like lopsided, love you, man. Thank you. When it's lopsided, you just never know. What did y'all do for, for Eminem's 50th? That's your guy. I know. I didn't. All right, so uh, it went on and they talked about some other stuff that wasn't necessarily relevant to this particular topic. But uh, the only thing that I would ch- that I would disagree with him on in that soundbite is when he said everybody's rapping good nowadays. I don't think that I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, other than that, though, um, that was what he said. So, you know, we are, you know, we, we, we talk about music and the influence of this stuff a lot. You know, we came up listening to this stuff. So, you know, and we still, for the most part, we still do, even though I think we, you know, I'll speak for myself. I have some of my misgivings about the impact of the music on a broader societal level, but strictly within a musical context, I still listen to the music and consume it on a pretty regular basis. So the point is we came up on, this stuff um, pretty heavily. So, you know, uh, what are your thoughts on what he had to say in regards to, you know, whether the, you know, is the music losing its luster or do rappers need to step up and do a better job or, you know, any of that stuff? Did any of that pique your interest at all? Uh, Yeah, I think he raises a a very good point. Uh, I agree with most of it. Uh, Just like how you said, when he says everybody can rap good, I don't know about everybody, but I think what he means is, no, nah, I don't know what he means. So <laughs> I'm not even going to speculate on that. I think it's kind of like where he's getting at with that at least was like, you know, like everybody in the league right now and the NBA, at least they're all skilled, but everybody can't hoop like that. And so just because you know how to, uh, put bars together and stuff like that doesn't people can put bars together now in a way where back in the day um, those guys were hot. Mm-hmm. And so if you, if you drop random rapper from right now and you drop him in the late nineties, people are like, dang, how is he stringing this together? And he's rapping fast like that. Like this guy's hot. I think that's kind of where he's at with that. But nevertheless, um, what ended up happening in the rap industry is that a lot of people started, once the direct to consumer became a thing, a lot of rappers started to not go independent, but they started to do things themselves, create music in their houses and closets and storage units. They just started making music all on their own. And so they're not being produced in high level production studios anymore. One thing that I can say about Drake, at least, uh, even though I don't like his, what he, you know, all of his songs. One thing that I can say is that typically speaking, outside of his last one, um, the, well, even his last one, the beats were pretty good. But sonically, his production is phenomenal. I absolutely, I, I can't. I can't hate on anything as far as like the actual production, the amount of care and stuff that goes into Drake's uh, music. So uh, especially the one uh, views uh, that that whole seat, that whole album CD. We're here with that. <laughs> uh, that whole album. That whole album was uh, sonically uh, spectacular and crisp and clean. Uh, other people don't take the time out to do such. Uh, the mixing and mastering is a lost art in the hip hop community. A lot of beats right now are so there's so many beat kits that every beat is starting to sound the same. And it's not as much nuance going on in, in hip hop as there once was. And just like how he said, you know, he said, hey, well, white people are actually paying attention to the details in their music. Uh, you know, I guess when he's saying white people, he's talking about pop songs and stuff like that which they are they they haven't dropped the ball when it comes to actually putting a lot of effort into their music so with that uh yeah the 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 pop songs uh they hit and a lot of rap songs even though that they're good we've gotten to this dumbed down uh nature and and hip-hop i was talking to uh some family members yesterday about it and uh I was saying that our music was dumb. I can now I can now look back and and hear old heads telling me that 
what are y'all listening to? I, I can't understand what they're saying. I don't know what they're talking about. And I was like, are you kidding me? These are bars. Yeah. And then now when I hear what's going on on the radio, I can, I can, for the songs where I can audibly hear what they're saying, I don't know what they're saying. I don't yeah. know what they're talking about. So there is no substance. There's there's not much to it. So music nowadays, or hip hop music nowadays, if you want to call it hip hop, is more or less rap. And so rap nowadays has become so watered down, mundane, and um, uninspired that it's difficult to listen to it and actually appreciate the music behind it. It's so cookie cutter. It's so rushed that. Um, there is no art to it anymore outside of it being an art form. So uh, how do you feel about it? Yeah, yeah. I, struggle I, struggle. With, I struggle with this a little bit because um, like, it's funny you, bring, you brought up the analogy of like, you know, sports. And mm -hmm. so, you know, basketball players today are highly specialized, but not all of them are actually good basketball players. Right. Like, very much like sports, music is a generational experience. Mm -hmm. So whenever I find myself in my fields looking at today's music and lamenting on how not good it is compared to the way it used to be, I stop and I ask myself whether I feel that way because I'm just generationally aging myself out of the music, which is something that happens to everybody, or whether it is actively, actually, objectively worse. Um, Sometimes I struggle. I don't know which is which. The only thing that I can really say is that I have noticed certain fundamental differences that the music has overgone, has undergone as the generations have transitioned from the previous one to the current one. So like certain things that I've noticed with the way that the music works, like, you know, this music is trying to adapt to the way that the the way that we as human beings um, consume stimuli. And so because we are, because we're like, for example, we intake so many different stimuli and messages on a daily basis, whether it's the phone or whatever it is that you're on, that our attention spans have gradually decreased. And as a result, uh, because of our collective, you know, lessening attention spans, that is being reflected in the music. And so now you, you're listening to this music where you have full songs that are like a minute and a half long, yep. two minutes long, yep. uh, no hook, no chorus. It's just a couple of verses and the song is over. And the song was like two minutes long. And I'm, it, 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 it's a shock to my system because when we was coming up, I was used to three sixteens in a chorus, you know, a song, <laughs> like a, a song, a song would be, you know, a hook, a verse, hook, verse, hook, verse, hook, song over. So mm -hmm. you got like three and a half, four minutes, and that was a song. And, you know, throughout your experience listening to that song, it never seemed as though this song is too long. Right. Uh, but now we got these short attention spans and you got these short attention span humans who are entering the music space. Songs are now a minute and a half, two minutes long. Before you know it, the song is over. There's no hook. And I don't necessarily know that that is good for music. I don't know that that I don't know that that can directly translate to uh, you being able to maintain the same quality inherent in the art. Um, it's like you know, look at sports. So basketball, for example, it's all about the three point shot, three point shot, three point shot, three point shot. So it's good when you make them. The problem is if you're having an off night and they're not going in, but you're so highly specialized in terms of the three-point game and we've adapted to this culture where it's all threes or busts, that if you have a night where your team isn't making threes, it's a loss and you can't pivot because you don't know what else to do. So at that point, all you're doing is shooting threes and even though you're clanking and clanking, you're continuing to shoot, 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 and it doesn't matter how many shots you miss, you're going to keep shooting because that's the way he is to just shoot the three ball. And so on a night where you're off, it's essentially like you forfeited the game because you had an off night, but you had the inability to adjust to do something different to generate offense. And I kind of look at the music like the same way. Like we've pivoted to this microwave 
version of the music and there's no way to pivot off of it. And because that's what's being consumed on on a more widespread basis because that's what's being funneled via the labels and from the internet, that I think people are starting to kind of collectively examine the music and say, is this as good as it used to be? Um, you know, again, oftentimes I find myself disqualifying myself from these types of conversations because when I get around a bunch of people who are really in love with the music, even some of those people around my age group, they tell me that I'm just old and I ain't get it and that I just need to get with it because this is the way the music is now. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, but I, I, I fundamentally disagree with that. I just kind of feel like good is good. Like I remember one, I remember Jay-Z was asked a question years ago, um, you know, what kind of music do you like? And his response was good music. So to him, he was what he, and he elaborated further saying, I don't really get into liking one specific genre or one specific type of artist. It's just if it hits your ears and it sounds good, it's good music. Like that's just it just is good or bad. Just like if a guy had a good game, he had a good game. And it, there's no nuance to that. Like you can't go eight for 30, uh, you know, and, you know, turn the ball over 10 times and shoot 60% from the free throw line, but try to convince me that you had a good game. Like, you can't try to warp my brain into thinking that that somehow is a good game when it's not. Uh, some of this stuff is black and white. And to me, I always felt like good music was was good music. If it's good, it's good. And if it's not, it's not. And I just think a lot of it is highly microwavable. And a lot of it has become very one tone. And you got a lot of these artists who are coming into this stuff, uh, basically uh, repeating a formula uh, because I guess they perceive it to be the formula for success. And when you talk about the potential for pop music potentially overtaking hip hop as, you know, once again, the most dominant music form, because I would agree that, you know, at this moment, rap and hip hop or however you want to characterize it is you know, the most popular form of music, just go to any social gathering um, and that'll, aff that'll affirm that assertion. I think there's something to be said for what can happen if every single song that you're putting out is about, you know, running up on your ops or having sex with your friend's girl or, you know, selling, you know, dope to your cousin or whatever the case may be like when every song is about that uh i believe that there's the potential for you to lose your mainstream appeal because when you go mainstream you have a large percentage of people who don't directly with that type of lifestyle and so at a certain point after years and years and years of that people are going to start listening to the music and they're going to start saying, this doesn't necessarily directly relate to me. So why am I listening to this again? Like artists like uh, Uzi and Travis Scott, they can outlast that because, you know, they're talking about having fun and popping pills and, you know, suburban kids can relate to that because suburban kids are doing that. Mm -hmm. But then you got a lot of these other artists who every single song, I feel like every time I turn on my series, I'm listening to another song about, you know, rappers who are going to run up on their ops, shoot on their ops, or, you know, sell this dope, or go and have sex with this guy's baby mom just because he feels like it. It seems like every other song is about something like that. And eventually these mainstream audiences are going to say, well, I don't really live my life according to that code or credence. So I think there's a natural propensity for them to gravitate towards the music if there continues to be such a heavy dose to it, of it. And so I kind of feel like all of that kind of plays a role in this thought or idea that at some point, the, you know, the hip hop industry is going to uh, lose position of its dominance. I think there's a lot of different factors that play into it. And those are just some of it. But I don't think that this guy, Westside Boogie, is necessarily incorrect. Um, I do think that if artists did care more about the craft and pay more attention to detail and care less about, you know, the persona of being a hip hop artist, if there was more of that going on, then this would be less of a conversation. But, yeah, I find a lot of the music to be extremely forgettable, 
highly microwavable and just objectively speaking, not as good as it used to be. Uh, but and, I'm old. Yeah, so <laughs> not, and all facts there agree with that 100%. And I'll just say this for the microwave songs and the songs that's a minute and a half, uh, two minutes long, streaming has, has created that. And um, people want repeats. And so it's, it's one of those things where you get a sample of it. You get a sampler uh, um, of whatever dish. It's kind of like when you go in the mall and they give you the orange chicken. And it's like, I want I want more of this. And then so you naturally hit repeat. So you get another stream. People's attention spans are wavering. And they're not going to hang around for a three-minute song. And they feel like they've gotten full off that three-minute song. So it's best to chop it down to two minutes so you can get that stream again. So this is also a product of a, a streaming nature that's happened and it's a byproduct of it. So, yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, but it's also like, it's a, like, so most of the artists that I listen to are over 30. Mm -hmm. um, I don't listen to no, none of the newer guys, the younger people. I, I can't do it. Um, so everybody who I listens to is like around my age, over 30 at least. And then, you know, the guys who would be considered older and whenever they put out new stuff, they're not adhering to that. They're putting out stuff based on when they initially started making their music. So it still seems as though part of it is generational uh, because, you know, older artists seem to be exempt from that. Like whenever I whenever I listen to, you know, um, like when Rick Ross puts out his new albums, whenever that happens or Pusha T, guys like that, guys who I like, even people like Kendrick. Because Kendrick is over 30, and I'm not the hugest Kendrick fan in the world, but it's more of that, you know, uh, you know, it's more of that traditional model of the of the longer song of the of the uh of the three sixteens in the chorus. You know, there's ver there's multiple verses and a chorus. The song ends up being, you know, three and a half minutes long at least. And I don't hear anybody complaining about those songs being too long, but those people are also talented in their craft so i think some of it has to do with the fact that the you know newer artists are just objectively speaking again not as good not as talented and when you're less talented you need to do things like make songs that are shorter to cover up your flaws um it's like you know how do you what do you do with a guy who is limited like again here's another sports analogy because i just find sports easily applicable to music but like how what do you do with a guy who is a really good shooter but is a defensive liability? Well, you hide him on the court. You put him in places where he can't be exploited for his weakness, and you make sure that your rotations are sound enough that the other team's best offensive player isn't going to wind up in a one-on-one -on -one situation with that guy because he'll cook him because that guy is a defensive liability. Well, if that guy was not such a defensive liability, none of this would be an issue. The only reason why you have to hide that guy on the court is because you'll know he'll get cooked because his feet are cement and he can't move laterally and he's a horrible defensive liability. And so a lot of this is talent. Like we wouldn't, I personally think we wouldn't even be having this conversation if there were more active participants within the ecosystem of the music who just made better quality stuff, who just plainly speaking were better and more talented than they actually are. And I think part of why we're seeing this current downtrend is because the market is being oversaturated with so many of these artists who aren't really that good at the music, but may be good enough at selling the lifestyle. And so you take the you take the trade off. The music ain't as good, but they're you know on but you know they, their social media game is on point, and they can consistently put out this highly microwavable music that will capitalize off of them for a six month run, and then once we're done with them, they're no longer relevant, and they're not relevant because they can't stay relevant, and they can't stay relevant because they're not actually good or talented at what it is that they do. Um, and so that's what I find is going on at a greater frequency now compared to what the way it used to be. But, um, you know, we'll see if it changes. We'll see if it stays the same. But, you know, I kind of, I you know, and again, I struggle because I don't know where my objectivity ends and where my subjectivity begins with this. 
I try to be as objective as possible, but at the end of the day, this is my opinion. I do kind of feel like it's not as good as it used to be. And a lot of it is the music industry itself. And a lot of it is the artists who are taking part, which is what, you know, West Side Boogie spoke to. Um, I think both of those elements can do their role to ensure that, you know, this particular genre stays on top. Because I do see a scenario in which it can be overtaken if it keeps doing what it's doing right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that was it for that one. Um, That was good sound bites. Uh, West Side Boogie, uh, appreciate you for the help on the channel. And uh, good luck to you in the future. We'll see what continues to happen with this music stuff. But.